In this video, I will talk about one of the most basic types of transformations in 3D space uh, called translation. Translation is when uh, we change an object's location from one location to another. And let's say we want to translate an object by this vector t, by th this quantity in each of the axes. So first thing we have to do is define a translation matrix because we need to multiply a matrix by the vector coordinates of the object in order to translate it. So a, transformat a trans translation matrix is uh, written as a big T and to translate these coordinates it would look something like this. For a translation matrix uh, we need to know a little bit about homogeneous coordinates and affine matrices. Please refer to my um, other video about affine matrices for a uh, detailed background, but basically an affine transform is one that uh, lets you perform linear transformations and then a translation. And in this case, we only want to um, we only want to perform a translation. And to represent affine transforms, we also need homogeneous coordinates. And what homogeneous coordinates are is that p uh, vectors, uh, direction vectors, are represented something like this where b x y z and is zero because direction vectors have no fixed place in the coordinate system and they're just represent uh, they're just there to represent directions uh, the fourth coordinate here is a zero whereas for normal vectors let's say s uh, for, ex uh, for example if this represents a point uh, a position vector this would be x y z one put a one over here so so the first three rows and the first three columns uh, are usually transformations uh, this is usually how transformation matrices are represented but uh, in this case we need homogeneous coordinates so we add another row and add another co column so the home for each uh, space for example two by two uh, the 2d space if you want to represent that in homogeneous coordinates it's going to be represented as three by three and same for three by a three D space uh, system would be represented in four by four matrices. In the case of homogeneous coordinates. So here, since we have a, we want to translate a specific point. We want a one. And t x, t y t z. So the amount we want to translate by goes in the last column over here. So let's say we have a point P, which is P, and we want to multiply it by, we want to translate it. So this would result in something like PX plus TX, PY plus TY, and 1. The last one will be one, and let's actually calculate it over here at the bottom. So let's say we have a we have this matrix, and we have the column vector over here. P x, P y, and like I said before, we put a one at the in the last column because it's a position vector or a point, <clears throat> and this would result in the first the first column by this row just be px plus tx. The second one would be py plus ty and the last would be p's 1 times pz plus 1 times tz and 1 times 1 is 1. So like I said before, we got this, we got the right result and we translated our prior object by um, the translation vector in each coordinate. And let's say we want to prove for why a direction vector can be translated. So as you can see that you have a zero here uh, in the direction vector. Hence, this guy right here, if this, if this was a direction vector, this would be zero and px plus, the, the first one would be px plus 0 
uh, end seam. All the other ones would be just PY, PZ, and the last one would be zero. Hence, if you try and translate a direction vector, you just get the translation vector in itself because there there is no specific coordinates where the direction vector exists and it only represents a direction. Now let's see how we can get the inverse of a translation vector. What the inverse of the translation vector does is that it translates an object that's already been translated back to where it uh, the original location it was translated from. So the way you represent a uh, an, an inverse is like this, and in in this case, um, in the case of a translation. All you need to do to get the inverse is put a negative sign in front of the transla uh, translation vector coordinates. So the 1, 0, 0, you have uh, these two rows and then you have the 0, 0, 1. And originally you had the tx, ty, and tz. The inverse of this vector would be this vector right here. And all this does is uh, the result would be, for example, let's say you had the px plus tx from before. We calculated that this would be the result of uh, the multiplication of a translation vector, a translation matrix, and an object's coordinates. It would be py, uh, ty, and so on. Now let's say this this part was already done and you had a, a matrix already the object was already translated if you apply the uh, inverse of the translation uh, to this product this would be px plus ty minus t uh, sorry this should this should be x px plus tx this is x <coughs> minus tx and px plus tx t, ty y minus ty and so on and they get cancelled and all you're left with is the original vector p and a1 and that's it for translations next I'm probably going to be covering rotations and sharing so stay tuned for that and please subscribe and share my channel thank you